Are you ready for a rewarding career in the electrical industry? Quality Electric of the Coastal Carolinas, QECC, is looking for qualified electricians and electrical helpers to join its Charleston team. QECC offers guaranteed full-time hours, make up to $30 per hour with possible performance bonuses and career growth opportunities. Enjoy benefits like health insurance, dental and vision coverage, 401k plans, and more. If you're a motivated, experienced electrician, this job is for you. QECC is an equal opportunity employer. For all job inquiries, send email to hr at qeccinc.com. Tom Swalbrick on LBC. As Joe Biden enters the political scene on the island of Ireland, state secrets exit the Pentagon. At 10 to 6 on Friday on LBC from Washington, Simon Marks, American Week. Tom, have you ever been on a family holiday when at every turn you get more and more bad news from home? That's how Joe Biden must feel tonight as he prepares to fly back to Washington after his week on both sides of the Irish border. In 1849, your great-great-grandfather, Owen Finnegan, would have taken a horse and cart around here, across to Narrow Water, and he got his boat to America. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. That's, it is so, so beautiful. There's no doubting the extent to which the president and the family members travelling with him, including his controversial son, Hunter, have been touched by Irish hospitality this week. No doubting as well the underlying message presented by the White House to the UK, given the president's half day in Northern Ireland that was then completely eclipsed by three full days south of the border. Facing questions about whether Biden hates Britain, the White House brushed them aside, but the relationship has felt a lot more special for the government in Dublin than for the Prime Minister in London. You know, it was great to welcome President Biden to the UK for, I think, the fourth time since he's become president. We spoke in particular about the incredible economic opportunities that are there in store for Northern Ireland. I think that's incredibly exciting. Not, though, as exciting as it would have been to talk about a free trade deal between the US and the UK. But before Biden departed Washington, the White House made it clear those conversations are going nowhere and that the president didn't even intend to raise the issue during his brief cuppa with Rishi Sunak. And there was another issue that went undiscussed, according to White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. Uh, the question on, uh, on leaks, and I know you had asked specifically about the prime minister in the president's meeting yesterday, um, it, it did not come up. Uh, the leaks, the leak document in that conversation. A fact that is astounding given the scale of the leaks that have been dominating the headlines here while the president is over there. Today, the Justice Department arrested Jack Douglas Teixeira in connection with an investigation into alleged unauthorized removal, retention and transmission of classified national defense information. Attorney General Merrick Garland with yesterday's bombshell announcement at the Department of Justice. Teixeira is an employee of the United States Air Force National Guard. FBI agents took Teixeira into custody earlier this afternoon without incident. So this is where America finds itself. A 21-year-old Air Force employee is accused of leaking some of the nation's most highly classified documents to a group of mates in a video game chat room. He reportedly told them that he thought they should deepen their understanding of world affairs. And while he could have recommended they subscribe to the New York Times, instead he decided to share with them secret documents about the war in Ukraine and other highly sensitive matters that were only written within the last few weeks. We continue to review a variety of factors uh, as it relates to safeguarding classified materials. Pentagon Press Secretary Patrick Ryder announcing the Department of Defense has decided to oil the hinges on the stable door now that the horse no longer resides there. This includes examining uh, and updating distribution lists, assessing how and where intelligence products are shared uh, and a variety of other steps. That'll fix it. Defense experts say thousands of people may have had the security clearances necessary to read the documents that Airman Teixeira is accused of leaking which is extraordinary given the nature of their contents. Revelations that the US doesn't think Ukraine will recapture much territory from the Russians this spring, that Egypt was secretly planning to send munitions to Moscow, and that South Korea's president, a close ally of the US, didn't like the pressure President Biden was applying to get him to send artillery shells to Kiev. That revelation also showed that American intelligence has been bugging the South Korean leader's private conversation. 
conversations. In Seoul, his press secretary offered this reaction. We strongly regret that the top U.S. intelligence agency was illegally spying on allies. We demand a thorough investigation and urge that no similar incidents occur again. There was fallout too at United Nations headquarters in New York after the documents showed the U.S. has been snooping on Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. His spokesman is Stefan Dujaric. The Secretary General has been at his job for for quite some time. Uh, he's been in politics and a public figure for quite some time. So he's not um, surprised, I think, that by the fact that people are spying on him and listening on his, uh, on his private conversations. Will he be protesting to the, to the United States about this? Uh, well, we don't, we're not in the habit of, of revealing his uh, private phone calls with various member states. I'll ask the kids to hop into that video game chat room. Maybe they can find out. Jack Teixeira appeared in court in Boston this morning, accused of the unauthorized removal and retention of classified materials. His motivation for the leaks with which he's charged remains unclear. The Biden administration can only hope that yesterday's arrest means there are no more documents out there that could still go public. At the White House, National Security Spokesman John Kirby earlier in the week with this laughable plea. This is information that has no business in the public domain. It has no business, if you don't mind me saying, uh, on the pages of uh, of uh, front pages of, of newspapers or on television, uh, and it should not be out there. Safe to say that Joe Biden doesn't have a lot of luck with classified documents. He is, after all, under Department of Justice investigation himself for allegedly mishandling some of them at the end of the Obama administration. He also doesn't have a lot of luck with some of his allies. This was the week when French President Emmanuel Macron went to Beijing. <laughs> Amid all the pomp and ceremony, he warned President Xi that China will be deemed an aggressor if it arms Russia in the Ukraine conflict. But to the fury of Washington, Macron told reporters that Europe shouldn't get dragged into America's battles, a message he repeated later in the week on a visit to the Netherlands. I must insist on the importance of strategic autonomy. Being an ally doesn't mean being a vassal. Being allies and doing things together doesn't mean we can't think alone. The White House claimed President Biden is still comfortable and confident in his relationship with the French leader. Biden's predecessor took a very different view. You got this crazy world is blowing up and the United States has absolutely no say and Macron, who's a friend of mine, is over with China kissing his ass, OK, in China. Donald Trump spoke there on Fox News, which in and of itself is worthy of note. He's given two interviews to the network in the last fortnight. That's the first airtime they've granted him since last November. It's an indication that his lead over his rivals in the race for the Republican Party's presidential nomination is growing. Rupert Murdoch may have soured on him, but Fox can no longer ignore him. This week, though, there was a new entrant to the Republican race. I will never back down in defense of the conservative values that make America exceptional. And that's why I'm announcing my exploratory committee for president of the United States. Tim Scott of South Carolina, the only black Republican member of the U.S. Senate. He's got the opportunity to position himself as the alternative to Trump, but this week in that regard fell at the first Fox News hurdle. Are you answering my question about how you beat Donald Trump? I, I, what I'm saying uh, in, to the, to, in response to your question is that as opposed to trying to have a conversation about how to beat a Republican, I think we're better off having a conversation about beating Joe Biden. Frit, the lot of them. Joe Biden will return to Washington tonight, hoping that Irish eyes here are smiling on him after his four-day trip to the Emerald Isle. One in every ten Americans considers themselves of Irish descent, and the Irish-American vote skewed in Donald Trump's direction in the last two elections. Joe Biden is hoping, Tom, that a touch of the Blarney this week will help him as he gets ready for 2024. From Washington, D.C., Simon Marks, American Week. At Granger, we're for the ones who specialize in saving the day and for the ones who've mastered the art of keeping business moving. We offer industrial-grade supplies for every industry with same-day pickup and next-day delivery on most orders, all backed by real people ready to help. So you can get the right answers and products right when you need them. Call, click or just stop by. Granger for the ones 
who get it done.